what's up everybody this is george kip forestry gis specialist and in today's video i'm going to show you a little bit more about editing i are going to go through kind of a really common editing workflow of cutting a uh, bigger polygon into smaller polygons such that you would do when uh, cutting a compartment into stands as you can see we're kind of going to pick up where we left off here uh, in the last video we went and we made this shape file we copied it from a compartment layer and now what we're going to do is uh, clip this into stance so before we begin uh, gonna go over a couple of things here display wise you notice that the uh, this stands probably got one big giant green ugly blob so uh, we can change some of those uh, properties here what we're going to do is actually uh, display it a little bit differently and uh, to do that, you can either kind of do a single left click here and the, where the symbology for the stands is, and that'll give you some options to change uh, the symbology for your stands layer. You can also right click on your stands and go down to properties. And again, that'll bring up kind of a menu here and uh, with a lot of different choices, but we're gonna select symbology and uh, of course click on that and get you to the same place. So typically when you're, you're kind of cutting up stands, it, it's kind of nice to make them hollow uh, so you can see what's underneath. In particular, doing an editing workflow like making stands, you, you need to be able to see uh, what's underneath this so you can draw your stands accordingly. So we're just gonna make this hollow, change the outline width, uh, something a little bit thicker, and we'll make it something nice that shows up well against the, uh, the the topo map. So we'll pick uh, a nice red color. And we're gonna click OK. So as you can see now, the uh, the stands layer that's going to be cut up is now in a nice thick red line. Now, this video isn't about, uh, you know, the nuances of creating stands. It's just a demonstration of like how to do this in ArcGIS. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start an editing session. And if you don't remember how to do that, we go to editor and start editing. And again, ask us which feature class we want to edit. And this can be a little bit important because, uh, for example, you don't want to make you don't want to be editing uh, your compartments layer or your roads. You know, make sure you editing the feature class that you actually want to change. So go ahead and select it, our stands and. Now again, we have the little selection tool, which you can see is that tool right there, the edit. So we can select which feature we actually want to edit. And what we're gonna do for some uh, like uh, editing workflow, like making stands is we're going to use this tool right here called cut polygons. And the reason we're gonna use this cut polygons tool is that we don't want to have uh, slivers or gaps in between our stands. In particular, when we're going to be doing some tasks like uh, calculating acreage later on here, which we're gonna do later in this video. Uh, so what cut polygon tool does is it basically takes this uh, this giant polygon as a cookie cutter and kind of, like you take a piece of paper and just take a pair of scissors to a piece of paper. So that way it'll all line up. Okay, so we have our stands there, layer selected and here like uh, we'll just kind of make a simple like kind of cut it up this uh, this little stream here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, start clicking right outside of our stands polygon. And we'll simply kinda click. In each left click of your mouse is what's called a vertex. So that's sort of where the, the polygon is, it will change shape a little bit. That's how you can control the shape of it. So we're just gonna kinda trace up the stream. And you know, put in enough ver vertices to capture the, the shape of it, but you don't wanna add too many that it'll eat up an inordinate amount of your time. And now we're, we're done here, we're gonna simply click right outside of the stand, we're gonna double click with the left mouse right outside of the stands layer here. As you can see now, it actually cut our big polygon into two separate polygons. And we're just gonna keep going here. I'm gonna go ahead and clip up this side. And I know these aren't the most exact ones, but it's just a demo video. Okay. So, and we'll make a just simple little stand right up here. Follow this drop. Okay. So we've kind of clipped our, our polygon into three separate shapes. And now if you right click here on stands, 
And let's look at the attribute table here. Now you can actually see that there are different feature classes here. So we actually have, you know, each uh, each little feature in this like feature class is actually represented here. So that's our first stand, our second stand, third stand, and fourth stand, etc. You know. So uh, now what we might want to do is also uh, calculate acreage on this. So we're going to go ahead and do some kind of simple like table operations in this video as well. So we're going to go ahead and do, and periodically what I always recommend everybody do is, uh, you know, save your edits. Now, when you're inside an edit session, you can always undo operations. There's this little undo, let, you know, last action button here. Once you stop editing, it, you can't actually go back and undo uh, what, what you edited. There are other ways to, you know, kind of recover stuff, and we'll discuss those in later videos. But I always recommend everybody, you know, you save your edits, uh, kind of the old saying, save early, save often. We're going to go ahead and stop editing this feature class. And again, you can see that each uh, feature the stands layer now is its own separate feature class. We have, you know, s several different stands here. So what we're going to do now is go through and do a couple of table operations here. Uh, some of our common workflow tasks are things like uh, calculating acreage. And here we have our attribute table. There's not a lot of information in there. There's this FID field, which is an automatically populated field. And there's this ID field, and that's where we'll put our stand numbers in a little bit later. So uh, you notice I did stop editing to, to add fields. You actually can, you have to be outside of an edit session. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a field, and I'm gonna call this field acres. And for this, I'm gonna select a, the data type of float. Now the difference between these is integers, short and long integers. Integers are just uh, whole numbers, they don't have decimal places. Uh, and float and double have decimal places and the difference between them is the length of the decimals that they carry. Text is only for you know text information and then date of course is for the date. So we're gonna again uh, select float and just leave the defaults and click OK. So now we have a field uh, called acres, and uh, right now it's populating zero because again we we haven't calculated any values for that. Now to do this in ArcMap 10.2.2, it's actually uh, you know much easier than it has been in the past. So what we can do is right click here on the acres field on the field header, and go to calculate geometry. And it's going to warn us that yeah we're calculating outside of an edit session. That's okay. And you notice up here it says the property. Now we can calculate area, perimeter, or the uh, coordinates of the, the centroid. The centroid would be like the point in the middle here. We're going to stick to area. And here you have a lot of choices. We could calculate in square meters, square miles, uh, square feet, but we're going to go ahead and choose acres. And a little warning there. And as you can see, there it uh, simply went through and it calculated the acreage for us. Now, what we're going to do too is uh, let's go ahead and start filling in these stand numbers here. So we'll go back and we'll go back to start our editing session. And to change some of these default values, like in a value, it's a matter of just simply selecting the field and I'm going to type one in there, make this uh, stand two, stand three, and stand four. Okay. And we're going to save our edits again. Now let's go ahead and uh, what we'll do here is I'm going to turn off the topo map real quick and let's go ahead and label our stand numbers real quick. So again, if you want to uh, access some of the the display properties of a feature class, we'll right click on the feature and select properties. We're going to go ahead and over to this labels tab here. And it pops up, it asks you a few different prompts. Uh, it asks you how you want to label them. And in this example, we're gonna label all features the same way. Now we'll be covering some more advanced uh, options like labeling options and display options in later videos. For now, we're gonna label everything the same. So, and we do wanna label this ID field. That, of course, is our stand number. And we'll make the text nice and big, so the display. So we're gonna make it uh, size 20, and we're also gonna display it in the color white. And last but not least, we'll check this little box up here that says label features in this layer and click OK. And as you can see, it uh, 
correctly labels all our stands right there. So we have stand one, two, three, and four. Uh, I hope that helps. And uh, in future videos, we're also going to be covering again some more uh, advanced like editing options, like how do you merge features if you make a mistake or something. Thanks for watching. Thank you.